Good evening. What is this on my bench? Well, I'm taking a break from the Grand Challenge bike. There'll be a video coming up about it in a second, but suffice to say, I've had to employ the help of a machine shop. <clears throat> uh, this is the side case off of Terry the Terrible Tomos. And these things that are inside it <clears throat> are component parts of the clutch, which were rapidly and spontaneously disassembled, as you can tell by the missing material, um, at some point at the end of last year. Now, at the time, I was far too fed up, that's the exhaust gasket, of fattling with this thing and getting covered in two-stroke oil and clutch oil to go and uh, do anything about this. And I also didn't have my spare parts. My spare parts are a whole other engine, um, which if you go right back in my videos, you can see running on the bench, bungee tied down. It's out of the second bike that I got alongside Terry um, originally. And the engine's good, but the bike has um, the bike has never really run as a complete bike. The engine runs, but there's all the same things that are wrong with Terry when I got him. There's a forum thread that goes through everything that I did to Terry in gratuitous detail, um, and it just to get the other bike up and running would have involved buying all the same stuff and doing it again, which I would have done. But there's no sign of the original registration number on the other bike and the VIN number doesn't show up. I've tried a few services to try and hunt down the VIN, hunt down the registration number from the VIN. And without all of that, I can't be sure that it's registered with the DVLA. Um, and I have nothing to give them other than the frame number in order to try and find the registration. And their response to that was go away. So. I didn't think it was worth putting the time and effort into that bike, so it's sat at the back of the house. I should probably chuck the frame in the metal recycling once I've taken the good bits off of it. Which is a real shame, because actually that frame is considerably better, it turns out, in condition than Terry's frame. I don't know, we'll see. The VIN tags only rivet on, so take from that what you will. So these are all chunks of the clutch, um, and I'm scooping them out of the side casing here. There are all sorts of parts missing. I do believe it was the first gear clutch that exploded. Let me see if I can find the remains of it. As it turns out, I don't even know where the remains of the clutch are because um, <laughs> they're not with the engine. But what I'm hopefully gonna do today is at least crack into the other engine um, and see what state that clutch is in. As long as it's physically complete, we might take a look at um, relining it, because it's only cork lining and it's only glued on, and I'm sure we can manage to glue cork to some metal if we need to. And while we're there, we'll do some performance modifications, hopefully. The other thing, of course, that we need to do is make sure that all of this crap is out of these bearings, which is going to be great fun, because I don't think it's going to be easy, and I don't really want to pull the bearings out, because... I've already been there and done that, but as you can probably hear, it sounds like there's bits of clutch in them. So, bear with me, I'm going to go and blast this out over my waste oil container, and then we'll find the other engine, which is in the garage here somewhere, and start taking it apart. Here's the clutch cover, all nice and shiny, wiped it out, you can actually see some of the damage the clutches did when they exploded in here. There's um, skate marks all over the place. So... We'll get that out of our way because we won't need that for now and as you can see hiding behind it is the whole other engine now i think this thing still has oil in it so we're not going to explode it all over the place but what i did find was my impact hammer impact hammer impact driver um, which would help us out with these screws because these are cheese headed at least they were on the other bike um, there's a strong chance that if I go at them without a little assistance, they'll just fall apart. Okay, first up, let's see if we can loosen up the screw. I'm going to pop the uh, impact driver in here, and I'm hitting it with a rubber mallet so that I don't destroy my ears. So that looks like it's jumped out. This is the oil drain plug, so I'm not going to go all the way and remove that. But what I am going to do while I'm here is just, if you don't have one of these things, by the way, get one.
do the fill level plug while we're at it. This one's completely wallowed out. As you can see, if I uh, just try to turn this, it tries to jump out. But look at that. This is like the best, I don't know, 30 quid for a really nice one you'll ever spend. You won't be able to see what I'm doing now, but I'm just going for the oil filler. And that's come off just as easy. Okay, let's drain the oil out of this thing. This is going to be a nice long rambly section of video because once there's oil everywhere, I'm not touching my camera. Oh look, there's oil everywhere. We should be safe from this until I tip the engine. I'm just going to pop out the filler as well. Pop those both safely aside in a little box. That's not good. It would appear on first inspection there's nothing in it. So I wonder what state these clutches are going to be in. Since there's nothing in it though, it means I can adjust the camera for you. I could go and find a proper screwdriver, but this will do. Nice long one up at the top. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Oh, gnarly. On the upside, the side cover on this one has lovely bearings that are not full of swarf. Hmm, ideas. Wow, that's crispy. It's just surface crap, but um, still. It's quite a bit of surface crap. Right, and these are the clutches. I can't say they look like they're in fantastic condition, unfortunately. But um, let's put some stuff aside and see if we can. So yeah, let's see if we can get that clutch drum off because it's much easier to deal with when it's on its own. Interestingly, the bearings in here, um, they've got their original dull metal cages on rather than the nice shiny, uh, where's it gone, nice shiny coated cages on this one. 
Yeah, all right, sue me. I know it's a, uh, a wheel nut removal socket. But it does the job. And it's marginally less heinous than if I'd used a, uh, a chrome molly one on camera. Now, in theory, this just knocks off. In practice, when I did this on the other bike, it took quite a bit more persuasion. Here it comes, and there we go, that's the clutch basket. As you can see, it's lovely in here. It smells of um, horrid old dried out transmission fluid and asbestos, um, the smell of which combines to be roughly what could be described as a canvas tent that's been in a loft for a year. Let's get rid of this engine. Um, we'll probably be back for parts later, and let's take a look at how bad this clutch really is. Okay, so here's the clutch, and uh, first gear should just pop apart, or sort of pop out, there we go. And then um, that's yet another washer. So that's first gear. A lot of people shorten these springs to get this back to sort of increase the, um, I think it's increase the RPM that these engage at. I am... Um, I've been told that if you do that, it's a nightmare to get them back together again. And so then we, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going out of shot here. So now we need to take this sew clip off to get to second gear, which is this one on the back. I was just about to get to struggling when I realised that um, a week or two back after the video I made about circlips on the Grand Challenge bike. I went over to uh, Machine Mart because I've never lived near enough to actually go to one. And one of the things I left with was this um, terrible set of circlip pliers. These things are awful, they break at the ends, but they were a tenner so they can be forgiven. And ceremonious opening process. Just get me to the tools. What is important to do with these, of course, is um, put one set of the heads on them, put the others somewhere for safekeeping, um, in a toolbox or a tool chest or down the back of a drawer somewhere, and never remember where they are, break the first set and then get really angry about it. Let's see if they do the trick for this circuit, though. I think we'll... Uh, push this pin clip across and round that should get the pin out sorry for my email noise I think we'll go with this set here don't lose the spring off the pin Stick that through. And I realise I put them on backwards. Ta-da! Right, I've taken my stupid juice now. That's proven that so clips were sent from hell and from the same place that printers were to frustrate home mechanics who don't have decent tools. One circlip. 
and one second gear clutch. <laughs> there's not, but it actually looks like there's spider's web in here. So the condition of these clutches, aside from the fact they're a bit crusty, doesn't look awful. Um, I think what killed the other ones was juddering more than anything else. Due to the tune of the engine and the power band being moved about a bit by my antics with them, um, exhausts. It got to the point where there was too much speed and not enough torque to shift properly. And probably I could be a little more aggressive with the timing on the bike, but I'm still pansing about that since I blew it up in a video you've seen before. So I think what I'm going to do today is um, take the advice of some internet folk and cut some channels in this cork. Um, just two diagonal slits in each. Um, and that apparently should change the friction coefficient just enough that it moves the shift point. Um, and then there's another trick where you slightly overfill with oil, and it's a, a mix of two different oils. I think it's some ATF and some regular engine oil, and that changes the coefficient a bit more, just moves the shift point up. Um, and then when these fall apart, we'll uh, come in here and peel them off, buy some cork, and recork them. But for now, I just want to get the bike back on the road because. His MOT runs out in a month, and I've probably spent less than 10 miles riding it since the last MOT. So let's cut some channels in these, um, try not to breathe any asbestos, I think these are just pure cork, but you know. Uh, and then get it reassembled, I think we're going to soak these in some ATF um, for a considerable amount of time. <laughs> because they're a bit crusty, and then we'll put that back together into the engine that's on the bike, blow that out from any chunks that ended up in there as well and give it a test ride okay not in any way precise but um what we're doing here is essentially shortening the amount of um, the disc that can create film friction by giving the uh, layer of fluid somewhere to go. That's the theory. clutch. Time to put it on a bike. I found the rest of the clutch. I never bothered to take it off the bike. Okay, following my series of completely inappropriate uses of tools, I think what's happened here is this clutch let go when the bike was running at such a speed that um, this square peg is slightly locked out. So a little bit of force to hopefully turn that back. You'll see what I mean when I get it apart, hopefully. Okay, so a little explainer of what had happened there. This piece has a square hole in it, and when the clutch went, it jammed with such force that this spun independently of this, um, and sort of started to mush together at the square edges of the thread, with the thread that was on here. And so what I had to do was get the screwdriver, lock it off with the mole grips, um, and knock it nice and hard, to jolt it so that it went back to being in the neutral position where this could slide off. The same thing happens with um, flywheel locating pins, but in this particular case 
I could have just gone and got a three-jawed puller, but that would have pulled half the threads off this spindle, which is the crankshaft, and didn't want to do that. So it's off now, time to clean up the other one and put it on. I thought we might take a quick look at the clutch that just came off the Telmos. That's this one. Now, I'm not going to be reusing this basket because I just leave it on this fairly heavily. Um, what I might do is take out this second gear and put the cuts in it because the cork looks a lot healthier um, because it's been sat in good clean oil. So, we'll uh, have a look. It answers the question I posed earlier in this video about which gear exploded. It, it very much was first on the shift to second. Um, so as the two tried to mesh, first gear juddered and um, exploded. Probably broke around this white, uh, I don't know if it's white metal or soft metal, I don't know what it is, but it feels soft. These weaker metal bits here, and so everything that you can see here are all parts that are actually inside the first gear on this good one over here. But yeah, once they exploded, they jammed, and um, <laughs> I rode the bike home, basically revving it up to get second gear to engage, and then firing off down the road, which I'm sure didn't do it any good, chomping on all those metal bits. <coughs> okay, let's take this basket and get to fight with the circlip again which is always nice there we go off camera I just blasted out the gear case on the other bike including checking around the chain with a bunch of fresh oil and other bits and bobs you didn't see any of that did you imagine that I just put that gear in because I did <laughs> We'll slide this back onto the bike now and um, button the cover up. Okay, excuse the angle, things are getting a bit tight in the garage. Um, I had to bring it all in because it started raining outside. And uh, just behind the camera is Lou with his engine in pieces. Okay, it's editing me. I didn't realise at the time that um, the camera ran out of batteries at this point. The bike's all back together again, um, and I'll post up at the same time as this a video of taking it for its first ride. But um, I'm going to make them separate videos, just so that I can uh, get this one rendering while I go and get the thing started. So, see you in the next video, where we'll um, see if this work has done any good. Cheers for watching. Bye.